हेलो एवरीबॉडी सो गाइस इन दिस वीडियो वी विल ट्राई टू गेट द इंट्यूशन बिहाइंड बाइनरी लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन बिफोर प्रोसीडिंग फर्दर लेट्स फर्स्ट हैव अ ब्रीफ ओवरव्यू अबाउट व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस वीडियो सो गाइस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द मैथमेटिकल इंट्यूशन बिहाइंड बाइनरी लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन एंड देन वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हाई द लॉस फंक्शन ऑफ बाइनरी लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन हैज सेवरल नेम्स दीज आर द डिफरेंट नेम्स बाय व्हिच इट इज नोन इन डेटा साइंस एंड मशीन लर्निंग कम्युनिटी apart from that guys if you really want to get the maximum benefit out of this video then please stick to these guidelines it is very very important now guys this is the loss function of binary logistic regression in this loss function the variable c is actually the class level variable which can be either malignant or benign depending upon whether the tumor is malignant or benign because we are taking an example of tumor classification to understand the intuition here we have defined two probabilities the first one is the probability of a, of any ih tumor being malignant which can be calculated using this expression the second one is the probability of any ih tumor being benign which can be calculated in this manner now guys if we want to express our loss function in terms of probabilities only then what should we do so guys here we have the class level column from our tumor data set what we are going to do with these columns is that we are going to uh, basically one hot encode our class labels okay and we are going to one hot encode our malignant label with one and benign label with zero now guys why we have done that well it's pretty interesting because these numbers can now be treated as probabilities so let's say this one can be treated as a probability of a tumor being malignant so we can say that for this malignant tumor the probability of a tumor being malignant is 100% which is true on the other side for the case of benign again this zero can be interpreted as a probability of a tumor being malignant so guys in this case the probability of a tumor being malignant is zero which means that the probability of a tumor being benign is 1 which is the case so you can clearly see that by doing one hot encoding we have represented the class labels in the form of probabilities and guys we are going to finally sum up these probabilities in the form of a probability distribution which is given by q data and if you look on the ci and 1 minus ci in your loss function then guys what we are going to do is that we are going to replace this ci and 1 minus ci and express them in the terms of q data so as you can see guys we have replaced our ci with q data is equals to 1 and 1 minus ci with q data is equal to 0 so now you can see that everywhere in our loss functions there are different probabilities in fact you can also write your loss function in this manner you can select one of these options or you can choose one of these forms it doesn't matters but guys from now onwards our loss function will be called binary cross entropy why binary because we have only two categories malignant and benign and guys the cross entropy is actually the measure of the difference between two probability distributions that means how much two probability distributions are different from each other and the two probability distributions are actually defined on a random variable or set of events like the way it is defined here for c in both the cases so guys the two probability distribution in our case are q data and p model q data is the binomial distribution p model is the model distribution which is actually our sigmoid function now guys if we want to perform the classification of a single tumor using sigmoid function then what should we do well for that we already know that there is a probability of a tumor being malignant which we have defined at the starting of this video and guys that probability is actually given by this expression and guys this expression is actually our sigmoid function now in this expression c is your class level variable m is the category for which we want to compute the probability that is malignant xi is our feature vector of the ir tumor and theta hat 0 and theta hat are actually the parameters of sigmoid function so in order to compute the probability of a tumor being malignant we have to know the values of these parameters okay now guys in the case of name based classifier 
we were indirectly trying to determine the values of these parameters through the parameters of the likelihood. Okay. So if you are not familiar with how we are doing it, then please go to our social media pages and check out our posts on uh, Navis classifier. That will give you the answer to this question. So right now we are not following this pattern. Instead, what we are going to do is we are going to randomly initialize directly the values of these parameters. So for time being, we can say that we know the values of these parameters. So it means we can use this expression and get the probability of a tumor being malignant for any higher tumor. And this will give us some value. Now, if this value comes out to be less than 0 0.5, then we can clearly say that the tumor is belonging to benign category. If it is greater than 0 0.5, then we can say that the tumor is belonging to malignant category. So now we have basically two takeaways till now. One is this probability, which is computed from a uh, sigmoid function. Okay. And that is the probability of any tumor being malignant, which has been also shown here. And this whole expression, which is the binary cross entropy of a single tumor, I tumor. On the other side, we have one probability distribution with us right now, which is the model probability distribution with us, which is this probability distribution with us. And on this probability distribution, we have probabilities of basically two events. One is benign, one is malignant, and they are coming out to be these values. Now guys, how we got these values? We got these values for a specific IA tumor by having the random values of our parameters with us, as well as the feature vector. And when we computed everything, we are getting the answer of this expression as 0.42. If we subtract 0.42 from one, we'll get 0.58. So guys, this is how we are getting the distribution. And that is why guys, this distribution is actually our label distribution of the class level for IA tumor from the sigmoid function. Okay. On the other side, we have the data distribution with us, which is the label distribution of the ground truth class level of the IO tumor from the training data. And guys, let's see how this label distribution looks like for a specific kind of a tumor. Let's say that the IO tumor, which we selected was benign. So on this benign tumor, we have 100% probability and on malignant class, we have 0% probability. Now the obvious question which arises is that what should be the desired relationship between the two probability distributions? And the answer is pretty obvious that the P model, that is the model probability distribution for a specific tumor should mimic the data probability distribution. And this should happen for all the tumors. Okay, that means for each of the tumor, the model probability distribution should actually mimic the mod, uh, data probability distribution. Why? Because guys, if the model probability distribution starts mimicking the data probability distribution for each tumor, then our model will be able to perform correct classification and it will be able to achieve good performance metrics. But the question arises is how? How can we do that? Well, our this data probability distribution, guys, it is constant. It cannot be changed because we are inferring it from the training example of the IR tumor. On the other hand, our feature vector can also not be changed because that is also we are inferring from the training example of the IR tumor. So guys, finally, we are left with thetas. So the idea is basically to find as much best values of thetas as possible, such that the P model starts copying, mimicking, or being like Q data distribution for a tumor. Let's try to understand this idea in a very, very close manner. Okay. Or I should say in more intuitive manner. Suppose we selected the IA tumor and let's say it was malignant. So the tumor was actually malignant as shown by the data distribution of that tumor. 
Whereas if you have a look on the model distribution, then based on our randomly selected parameters, it is not able to at all mimic the Q data. So it should actually mimic the Q data, something like this. But how we are going to make this possible by choosing the values of theta hats such that our model distribution becomes something like this. And now you can see that both the distributions are looking quite similar. Let's take another example. Let's flip the scenario this time. Okay. Suppose the IA tumor, which we selected was actually benign. And again, guys, if you see here, the distributions are not matching each other because the P model is not mimicking Q data for our IS tumor, which is now benign. So again, we should find as much best values of thetas as possible, such that the P model starts to mimic Q data in a fashion like this. And now you can see guys that for the optimum values of our theta hats, the P model for our IA tumor has again started mimicking the Q data for that specific tumor. So that's pretty interesting guys, right? So the core idea is that for any specific tumor, two scenarios can happen. One is this one, one is this one. In the upper scenario, the two distributions are very much matching with each other. The P model is very closely able to mimic Q data. And therefore, the binary cross entropy for the IA tumor is going to be a very low value. Whereas in the bottom case, it's going to be a very high value. And guys, we have to make sure that not only for this single IA tumor, but for all the tumors, the binary cross entropy should be a low value because only then for all the tumors, this scenario will happen. So the idea is pretty simple guys. Okay. And this binary cross entropy for all the tumors is going to be a scalar value for the most optimum values of theta hats where it is going to be a minimum value. So one thing is pretty obvious that for a specific given values of theta, this is going to be a scalar value. And we have to make sure that the scalar value becomes as less as possible. Now guys, as you can see that uh, here we have both the distributions for the case of malignant category. And here we have both the distributions for the benign category. And we are going to rewrite our loss function in the same old form by rewriting this P model distribution in the terms of this distribution. So guys, it is going to now look something like this. That is the same old form. And we call this binary cross entropy. So ultimately guys, we are trying to find those values of theta hats such as the cross entropy, which is this whole thing, reaches its minimum value, indicating the minimum disparity between the two distributions. Which two distributions guys? One is uh, P model and one is Q data. What will happen? Therefore, guys, we will get a model that can classify any random tumor correctly. Now, guys, how we can find these optimum theta hats? Guys, that is basically the numerical optimization problem. And in order to solve this numerical optimization problem, we are going to use gradient descent algorithm. And in gradient descent algorithm, guys, we are going to run two updates in a loop. And this loop will keep on running till we get the most optimum values of our theta hats, where the cross entropy is going to reach its minimum value. So the first update is going to be applied on theta zero hat. And guys here, F is our cross entropy loss for which we are taking the derivative on the initial guesses of our parameters. And the second update is going to be applied on theta hat. Okay. And guys, that is going to basically find our most optimum theta hats. Okay. And so ultimately we are trying to reduce the disparity or the difference between the two distributions. And guys, the difference between the two distributions is also measured by KL divergence or Kullback-Leibler divergence. And therefore, sometimes 
binary cross entropy loss is also called Kerr divergence or log loss because of these logs or categorical cross entropy loss because of these categories or cost function or loss function. There are many names. So guys, I hope that uh, by now everything would have been clear to you that how the binary logistic regression actually works and why its loss function is ruled by many names. Okay. Uh, so guys, in the next video, we are going to talk about multi-class logistic regression. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you.